So Mark Radford is my name. I played basketball from 1980 to 1983 for the Seattle Supersonics. Went to college at Oregon State, 77 to 80. And after college and pros, went on to become a real estate agent in Portland, Oregon. I've been doing that for 25 years. My favorite player was Dr. J, Julius Irving, Philadelphia 76ers. He was pretty flamboyant. He uh, could jump high and did all sort of acrobatic shots and had a good jump shot, won a lot of games. But he was, a, he was just a, a good person off the court, on the court. I try to emulate him in a lot of different ways besides basketball. But he was my favorite. Um, so at what age did you realize that you could make it to the NBA? I realized when I was um, in seventh grade, I realized that that was my passion. I did all every sport, football, baseball, basketball, track. And I was good. And I was you know, top of my class. Uh, but in basketball, I was just a little more exceptional than most. And I realized that I had the potential. And then I just started applying myself. And I just, more out of love for the game. So I really, I really loved it. And I realized I was good. And I thought, and I, I think I can take this a little further than, than any other sport. Why not go for it? So I applied myself to basketball strictly and, and started getting better and better. And, uh, and, and mainly through playing with college guys. So when I was in eighth, ninth grade, I'd go and play at University of Washington. I lived down the street from there. So it was about a mile away. I'd go there after school and start playing with guys in college. And when you're doing well against college players, you realize that there's only one level above them that I had the potential. So that's when I knew it. Probably a greatest accomplishment. I, I mean, making the pros is a, is a big accomplishment. So I, in, in that aspect, it's big when you compare it to all the players and you look at statistically how difficult it is to even make it to college so from that aspect. But making it, uh, being successful, successful in college and making it to number one in the nation was, was quite an accomplishment from a bunch of local high school players in Oregon which is difficult to do when, uh, when you look at all of the rest of the nation. So that was probably the, the biggest accomplishment, to take a group of Oregon players, local guys, and achieve the highest success nationally. Um, is there anything you would do differently if you could do it over? Yeah. Well, in hindsight, I, I've had a great life, and I can't really regret anything I've done. But you look back and say, God, I wish I had a different agent, or I wish I'd have... You know, when this person told me to do this, I would have done that. And so you're young, you make mistakes. And in, in, in hindsight, there were some things I would do differently. But everything came out uh, a happy ending in my mind. So despite the fact that I didn't achieve all my successes, all the dreams I had, I achieved more than most, and I'm happy and satisfied. Um, do you have any advice for young basketball players who are trying to play professionally? Yeah, uh, go to school. <laughs> go to school because you see uh, the, the majority of them leave school early now. They leave college and they play for a short period of time and they make a lot of money. Uh, the tip-top players make so much money, I don't think they can lose it, although you keep hearing stories of them losing it. But inevitably, and what I try to tell players who, who want to become pros is that if you look at my contemporaries, all the guys I played with, Magic, Bird, I mean, Bird is the general manager of uh, Indiana Pacers. He still has a job. Magic has his own company. He's working. Jabbar went broke. He has to go, you know, he's a part-time. You know. If you look at all the guys that played, and they made a lot of money, and they were very successful, best players that ever played, they're all working. You know, they're doing something, for the most part, to, to try to earn a living. And so, if you don't have the brain power, you don't have the, the knowledge and the, and the background, you're going to just waffle, and you're going to be in trouble. And so... Inevitably, you, you have to introduce yourself to the workforce at some point, and you have to be prepared for it as you can. So it, it appears like basketball will last forever, but it doesn't, not for the, even the best. Working as a real estate consultant, what kind of stuff? Ah, good question. Uh, it's similar in certain ways because the, the uh, how hard you have to work, and uh, at certain points of a game or certain points in real estate, there's critical times you have to be very focused and you have to pay attention to detail. And so certain of those aspects you can, you can re, you know, transfer from one, one thing to another skill. And so I was able to outwork a lot of my contemporaries in real estate, did very well by outworking them. 
and not quitting and working, putting a lot of hours in in the gym, putting a lot of hours out in the field in real estate. There's certain similarities.